Today, I want to show you how to prepare payroll in Zero. Let's take this demo company as an example. Before you start, you need to set up a few pay items and the pay calendars and the super funds for your payroll. You need to click on the company name and go to settings. In the settings, there's a payroll settings. Once you click into the payroll settings, you will see there's the organization information showing you how those payroll transactions will be posted to which account. Normally, they are already correct. Then you can go to calendars. Calendar means how often you pay your staff. It could be weekly, fortnightly, monthly, or quarterly. Here we can see there's weekly and fortnightly calendar already exist. If you start a new company, normally there will be no calendars and you have to add new calendar. Let's take this as an example. And you can pick a name of the monthly calendar. You need to select the start day, which is normally the first day that your employees start. And also the first pay day. And also you can click here to make this as the default pay calendar for your new employees. So this calendar will be assigned to any new employee you add on and click add. Next, go to pay item and there's a few pay item already exist. So there's a few uh, pay item you can add and each of these pay have these features. But uh, normally I also like to add one more. So if we go to ordinary time earnings, Normally I put it as a fixed amount and the display name is a fixed amount as well. Rate, instead of a rate per unit, we choose a fixed amount. You don't have to put on amount and I select the account. And this normally is the wage account, wage and salaries. And here you can see there's a few options, exam from PAYG is holding, exam from superannuation, and also reportable as W1 on activity statement. Normally you will click this one so once you have any pay amount into this pay item, it will be automatically posted to W1 when you prepare your bus, which could make your bus preparation a lot faster. So you don't have to go back to the wage report and double check it. Now the two options is if you want to make this pay exam from PAYG, so the system will automatically work out PAYG of this pay. And this one is to stop the system automatically work out the super of this pay. It only applies some specific payment, which it doesn't subject to those two. For example, the recently the JobKeeper payment is not subject to super, so you can click this one. So the system only generates super on this pay. But normally for ordinary salary earning, you should keep those two unticked. Click Add, so you will have this new pay item here. And the next one is go to superannuation. So for each employee, you need to ask what, which super fund they use. You need to add the super fund here. So you are to be able to select the super fund in the pay run. And it could be a regulated super fund or self-managed super fund. So you can choose any of that. Let's take an example of Australian super fund. Super, which is here, and the employer number. If you have an employer number, you can put on, but it's not necessary. Sometimes it could be hard to find the right super funds. So you need to check the super fund USI to make sure you find the right super fund. And let's add this Australian super fund. The way you can find the right super fund is you can go to a website called uh, so Super Fund Lookup. Once you click in there and you can type in the name of the super fund or the ABN or ACN and find the right super fund under the right USI. Let's go back to zero. So you can see the Australian super fund has been added. Once your staff has located earnings into a specific super fund, the super fund will have a lock button show up here, which means you cannot delete this super fund anymore because uh, there has been super contribution assigned to this super fund. So once you set up those calendars, pay items, and the super fund, and you can go to payroll now. So click payroll, and then the next thing is you need to set up the employee. So normally, if you start a new company, there will be no employee in there. And you need to click Add an Employee and Add New. Let's make an example to add a new employee. So you need to fill in the name of the employee, which is say ABC, and the last name is uh, uh, XYZ. And date of birth is the 1st of January 2000, just 2000. I wish that's my birthday. Gender, it's all optional, doesn't matter, but you can fill in as much as you can, say accountant, 
uh, phone number, mobile, it's all, it's all good, but I strongly recommend you to put in their email because send the pay slip to them directly. And then once you click uh, save, you get to this page with all the basic information you just entered. And basically you should go through all those tabs to fill in as much information as possible to save you time afterwards. I'll show you how to do it on each one. Employment, the start day of the employee. Under the calendar, you can see the system has automatically allocated the monthly calendar because monthly is the default calendar. But you can choose other calendar if you employees on different pay cycle. An employee group is uh, if you have lots of employee, different department, you can put a different employee group. And the holiday group is for company in different state or country with different holidays. And ordinary earning rate, so you can just choose the ordinary hours. And also you need to add a super fund for this employee. Simply click add a super fund. Choose the one you have set up in the payroll settings. For our example, it's Australian Super, and you need to enter the employee number, which is the membership number your employee provides you. And I click OK. So the super fund will be added. The next one, OK. So it uh, reminds you you need to save before you leave the site. So make sure you click Cancel and save it. Click the next, next tab, which is Tax. Fill in the tax fund number. You can put it in the employment base, which is a full-time, part-time, casual, labor hire, superannuation income stream. Pretty rarely you pay a superannuation income stream. Um, so for the full-time, the part-time, there will be leave in there. Uh, for casual, the system won't work out the leave for the staff because they don't entitle to any leave. So let's just take a full-time as an example. And the resident status is all China resident, foreign resident, working holiday visa. This is to decide what withholding rate the system will pick up for them. So if you're Australian resident, you'll have a lower withholding tax. Uh, foreign resident, your tax will start from 30%. Working holiday makers, PAYG withholding rate will start with, from 15%. So if you hire a working holiday visa holder, you need to choose this rate. So just take the Australian resident as, as an example here. And if your employee has HEX, you should click this one. So a higher withholding will be withhold to pay their HEX debt. And then you can click save only, or you can fire it. Firing it is like filling a TFN decoration form in the past. Instead of fill a physical form, you can simply click file here to send those information to ATO. And then move on, so we can go to leave. You can do a assign default leave, so the system will automatically work out how much annual leave this, the uh, staff has accumulated based on the hours they worked and then the next one is called a bank account so you can put on put in the name of the uh, pay description the account name and also put on the BSV and account number but a zero the, the zero system will not be able to pay the wage for you so you still have to pay the wage through your online banking however when you go to pay round, I'll show you later you can export a called a BAB file through that BAB file you will be able to do a bulk wage payment with one transaction instead of paying each employee. So that would save a lot of time. So then next one, you go to pay slip. This is where you can see the pay slip that your employee fa has. So if your employee wants you to download any pay slip for them, you can go here to find all the pay slips. Pay template is something pretty good to use. Add the template now, and the, which will automatically generate those template when you do each pay run. So which means, and then say, if this employee always do, um, say, 100 hour a month, and also his rate is $20 an hour, so he makes $2,000 a month every month. If that's the case, once you enter this in, you don't have to do this again for the future. And also, remember to click the super fund. So the default super fund will show up here, and then save. This part could save you a lot of time afterwards when you do the pay run, if the employee is get paid the same every pay cycle. So the opening balance is only applied to when, if you are using another system and you change it to the zero. So before you use this system, there will be an opening balance for the uh, staff which already been paid. And you can put in here, and system, when the system work out the year-to-day figure, they will add this up. And once you set up the employee, the next step is to pay employees. Then you click pay run and you select the right pay run. And you will see there's fortnightly, monthly, weekly, or unscheduled payroll. 
So the one we set up is monthly. And then you can see ABC, XYZ already automatically show up. And also the earning also automatically show up. If you don't do the pay template, it will not show up. It will be all zero. And you have to click in and type in 100 hour, the rate, and then work out the, fee, the, the number again every time you do a pay run. So if you set up template, it could save a lot of time. And the system is very smart. You work out how much you need to pay your employee, how much tax, how much super, automatically. So what you do is save and close. And once it's all correct, once you have it checked, you can go to pay, post pay run. And your pay run will be posted. And which means the information will be set into the system. And then you can do a few things after this is to email pay slips. Your staff will receive their pay slips automatically in their email. This is a very good function compared to Excel pay slips. And uh, so this is a very time saving. Another thing is uh, to file it. File it is the requirement for single touch payroll. Once you file this payroll, and then the information will be sent to ATO. The status will be pending at the moment, and after a while it will be processed. Like, uh, so it's all overdue, but uh, if it's lodged, it will say it's lodged. So it will become a green, green status bar here. So another thing you can do is, you can click this bank payment. So if you have entered the, the staff's bank account detail, it will show up here automatically. And then all you need to do is go to your online banking, and double check the account number, it all shows up here, help you to make payment. But you can also, so once you post the pay run, what you can also do is download an ABA file. So once you download the ABA file, um, the same information in here will be generated into an ABA file. You can go to your online banking and upload that ABA file. The bank system could generate a um, one payment, so you only need to make a $4,832.25 payment, and the bank will distribute all those salary to the correct bank account. So that saves a lot of time. So once you've done that, the, the pay run has been set up, posted, and the file, you can see this filed. When it's become green, it means it went through and it has been lodged to ATO. So you have complied with a single touch payroll now. Once you have done that, you have this is all you need to do periodically. Uh, to post your pay round to keep your information updated. So there's other functions available like timesheet uh, you could use for like a restaurant with different employee um, different roasters. You can also use them, but I, I won't go too much detail into those fun specific functions. So basically that's all you need to do for every period. And in the next video, I will share with you how if you made a mistake in the pay round, how do you correct the mistake? It's very tricky. It takes us a lot of time to find out. Uh, we'll show you in the next video. Thanks for watching.